Hello and welcome back to Game of Trades, your number one channel for videos on the stock market and cryptocurrencies. This video is going to be focused on the S&P 500 that has just seen a relentless move down over the past few months ever since January with really no sign of relief. We're in this capitulation move here and stocks are at oversold levels not seen since the COVID-19 pandemic. These types of readings have only occurred a handful of times throughout the past decade. It really does show the extreme environment that we've been in uh, since January. Now we do anticipate that there is going to be a better market environment for stocks that's going to follow this. You know, obviously this move has been relentless and has lasted a lot longer than we expected, but recoveries from these types of corrections can be extremely swift. And in fact, this type of panic, in our opinion, can provide some extremely attractive risk reward. Now, of course, that is our opinion and everyone is entitled to their own opinion. That is what makes the market. I always love to hear other people's opinion on the market as long as they are brought about in a respectful manner. The current pessimism on the stock market is just astounding. The number of bulls in the market has never been this low to the same levels that we saw at the bottom of the 1990 uh, recession. It's always fascinating to see sentiment getting extremely bearish as the market is going down when really investors should have been bearish here at the all time high. Inflation was already at 7%. You had no signs of the CPI slowing down back then. And the Federal Reserve was starting to talk about tackling inflation back here in the bond market was starting to price that in in this period. If you were around back in January, nobody was expecting the market to go higher despite all of these big signs that people are talking about now. Now that inflation is actually showing signs of slowing down. The bond market has priced in a big, big part of the Federal Reserve tightening cycle. And you've got the stock market that is currently at a 24% discount. Now investors are getting extremely bearish on the market for those same fundamental reasons that we had already back in January. Now that's not to say we can't go down further and continue this capitulation move before things improve. But this is just to highlight the absurd market psychology that you see again and again in stocks, people like to buy high and sell low, and it can be incredibly painful to look the other way. And that can last a lot longer than what you can expect. And even though we can be absolutely completely wrong, this is a process that has worked for us in the past, and that we remain very confident in. Now I do have a quick announcement, we're going to be doing a complete revamp of our service and of our website at gameoftraits.net over the next few months. First of all, we're drastically improving the quality of our research, bringing branding to our charts, producing our very own charts. We're also doing a complete reorganization of the dashboard where all the features of the website are going to be organized in one space. And we're going to be building a model portfolio that funnels in all of our research into a strategic diversified investment. So essentially, the goal that we have over the next few months is to reorganize the entire service into two big parts. First of all, the model portfolio that's going to be based on a six to 12 month time horizon. And to complement that we're building a ratings and trading dashboard where we're going to be posting all the tactical trade ideas or shorter term trade ideas around these investments. And the goal is really going to be to maximize the risk reward on all of these strategic investment ideas, enter at the right moments and exit at the right moments. And just to be clear, all members that are currently signed up to the website will keep the pricing that they originally signed up for. That's a big policy that we have at Game of Trade is to honor the members that have stuck with us since the beginning and have seen the service improve and grow from being very, very basic to hopefully becoming a major and absolutely necessary asset for individual investors. Now one chart I wanted to show you and unfortunately, this is not very good quality. But I think this is probably one of the most important concepts that is not very well understood by the market right now, especially amongst retail investors. This is the financial conditions index from Goldman Sachs 
right? And they've got this index that's basically a perfect indicator of PMI. And very often it leads PMI, right? In recoveries, it often leads PMI. In downturns, it often leads PMI. And right now it's telling us that PMIs are going to collapse. And why is that important? Because PMI is basically the earnings of the S&P 500. And if you know what the single biggest driver of the stock market is, it's earnings. So if the PMI is going to drop down very, very far in a similar way to what happened uh, during 2000 and what happened during 2008, well, that's exactly the reason why so many people on internet are talking about this immediate, imminent collapse of the stock market, right? And it makes sense. But the big problem there is right now for us and why we don't like this thesis is because everyone is well aware of it. Everyone knows that tighter financial conditions is going to lead PMI lower. In fact, look at how perfect this relationship is. Look at the financial conditions index. It's down incredibly low. And so you're going to see PMI come down here, right? That's going to happen. We're going to see that, which is why our opinion is that if everyone is well aware of this, everyone has positioned for it, then it's not going to be a surprise when PMIs come down in a similar fashion to how it came down in 2011, 2016, 2018. This move down in earnings, these revisions that everyone is waiting for, these are priced in and it's not going to spook anyone when they occur. And I do have proof for that because we have a beautiful, perfect example of how that occurred in 2018. You can see the situation here was exactly the same. In 2018, you had financial conditions tightened very significantly. Oil was uh, going parabolic throughout this period. Yields were going higher. And so you had tighter financial conditions that were telling you that the PMI was going to roll over and the economy was going to slow down. But you can see here, financial conditions in 2018 started to point back up even as the PMI was moving down, right? So that's interesting. Financial conditions led the PMI and then you had this type of cross where financial conditions were easing because basically what was happening, oil, oil was coming down throughout this period, responding to these PMIs that were collapsing. The Fed was pivoting on their monetary policy and the bond market was coming down. All of these leading to much easier financial conditions as the economy was slowing, right? And where do you think the market bottomed? Did it bottom here? at the bottom of the PMI or did it bottom here? The answer is that it bottomed here. And so back in 2018, and let me just put this into context of the actual price action so that you understand what's going on here and what I'm referring to. And here I've put the market, the S&P 500 with the Euro dollar futures, which is basically the market's anticipation of monetary policy. So I don't have the financial conditions index on trading view, but this is a pretty good indication of it. And so you can see here, that's the proof that the market bottom just after financial conditions started to get easier. And throughout this entire period right here, throughout this entire period, financial conditions were getting easier, but the PMI was still coming down, right? So we were in this period right here where economic growth was slowing, but the market was already looking forward to the economy's response to easier conditions. And so that's why so many people here back, if you were trading back in 2019, many investors were very, very confused as to why the market was rallying when we were getting very bad economic data. Earnings were being revised to the downside, and yet the market was just rallying again and again on that bad news. And you can see that's not at all the same thing that we had in 2008, by the way. And I think this is relevant. I do think this is very important to understand that in 2008, financial conditions were getting easier here. Here, the PMI, so the actual economic growth, the green line was leading the financial conditions down. And the same thing happened here in 2000. Right. PMI was leading financial conditions down. So the market didn't anticipate anything here. The market wasn't aware that this was going to happen. In fact, if you were just looking at the financial conditions index, well, it was in the positive here. It was telling you that growth should pick up from there. So if you were looking at this indicator back in 2008, it wasn't telling you that a crash was imminent. 
And now it is, and so everyone's aware of it, everyone's talking about it, and that's exactly why we think it's not going to play out that way. It's not going to play out like a 2008, at least not now, not when everyone is expecting it. And of course, we could be wrong, especially if oil continues going parabolic here, if the geopolitical situation escalates, or if the Fed remains very hawkish. And one of the very interesting things that's happening right now is on the euro dollar futures. Now, let me just quickly invert this chart. I'm going to do one minus the euro dollar futures chart. And you'll see exactly why we're looking at this. This is one of the big things that is included in the two year yield. If I put the two year yield on top of this chart, you'll see it's very, very similar. They track each other very closely. The euro dollar futures is, as, is essentially what the market is anticipating Fed policy is going to look like. And you can see here, we've had a massive breakout in the euro dollar futures. Well, this is more like a breakdown, but this is an absolutely crazy, crazy move here that we're seeing. And this is why the market is coming down very violently right now. If I put a trend line here capturing these uh these levels you can see that uh this was a trend line resistance or support on the euro dollars and it got broken the market probably didn't expect this to happen it took them by surprise and we're now seeing this spike this massive spike in rate hike expectations by the market so is the fed so is the fed going to follow through on that that's a big question and it definitely does the high volatility that we're seeing on the markets right now. In fact, speaking of volatility, we're currently at that resistance line that we've talked about, right? Last video, we talked about the VIX bouncing off this trend line support here, and now it's at resistance, right? So whether that resistance holds, that's another story. If this breaks out, then that capitulation that we're seeing right now in the market is going to intensify. Now on a more promising note, and, and here I'm just gonna get back to the classic Euro dollar futures chart, and I'm gonna show you here the S&P 500 on top of this chart, and you'll see that bottoms in the Euro dollar futures, right, because this move is getting very, very overextended here. Uh, if we see a bottom in this move, you can see that corresponds to bottom on the S&P. In 2006 here, bottom on the S&P. In 2000, it didn't play out for a bottom, right? It played out very near the top. Look at this. Every rule has its exceptions. In 1994 here, bottom in the euro dollars, bottom in the stock market. Here in 1989, bottom in the euro dollar futures, bottom in the stock market. Same thing in 1984 here, again, and again in 1982. So that's interesting, right? That depends on whether you wanna anticipate the move or if you actually want to wait for that bottom to form, in, in which case you're risking being late to the party. But if we remain objective, this does not look like a trend that wants to bottom right now. It hasn't bottomed and that's why the market is currently coming down very violently. So that's about all I wanted to cover in this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Now, in the meantime, I wish you good luck on your trading and see you next time.